I live my life with no limits. I place no boundaries on anything and everything out there that I want to accomplish. I believe fundamentally you cannot reach your full potential until you learn how to suffer both physically and mentally so far beyond your imagination. Then and only then can we grow as humans and that's what I've lived by every day of my life to push and to grind as hard as I can to create more opportunities for the future. I've always strived to do things that are very, very difficult. Um, I'm motivated by doing things that people look at and go, how in the world could he do that? Whether it was running 50 miles, um, playing football at Alabama, building a company from nothing, um, doing, going out and, and harvesting a, a 235 inch mule deer on a 12 hour stalk, to uh, climbing the mountains that I've climbed around the world anything like that. And that's just really what motivates me as a person. So when I was a young, a young boy, I think I was three or four years old, I got my first BB gun. And from that point forward in my first fishing rod, I, I don't know what it was. I was just drawn to the outdoors. All I wanted to do is to be outside hunting and fishing all the time. I didn't have any hunters or fishermen in my family, but that's what I wanted to do. It was as natural as doing anything I'd ever done. And that love for hunting and being outside has just grown and grown and grown. And it's gotten, the love is, it gets bigger and more powerful every year, which is uh, a very unique thing for, I think, relationship. And my relationship with the outdoors um, has improved every year. It's gotten better. And that's something that's driven me um, to, for conservation, for preserving land, to creating land, uh, to go out there and to go chase animals with my bow and arrow. In, in 2004, when I really started my bow hunting career, it was a real fresh beginning. I had spent eight years not hunting at all. Uh, when I started uh, Zoe's, I didn't have time, resources to, to hunt whatsoever. And then when I got back into hunting, I was so drawn to the outdoors because it was just, it, I needed it. I needed the space and the wide open spaces. I needed my brain needed to kind of, just to kind of take a break. And when I put the bow and arrow in my hand and I shot that first deer, the intensity that I felt and the passion that went through my body, uh, it was just electric. I'll never forget that. It was just a doe, but it was truly one of the most unbelievable experiences I've ever had. And like anything in my life, I, I really like to practice and do what I do to become the best that I can possibly be. You never really master um, bow hunting, just like you don't master yoga or anything like that. You just simply work as hard as you can to get better. I mean, I think the you know thing about land is cool to me is that it's a canvas, right? It's just like a canvas and a painter. Yeah. And you start with an empty, an empty canvas, and then every time you brush stroke it, it changes. Right. Same thing here. Every time I do something, the, the land changes and it's changed forever, um, which is neat. Like I planted live oaks up on the driveway that were this big when I planted them, and now they're you know they're this big in three years, but. Right. When I'm dead and gone, somebody's gonna go, I wonder who planted those live oaks. Yeah, yeah. You know, I found, I, I found this earlier and I wanted to kind of pick this up, but this is, a, this is an old seashell and this is actually probably over a million years old. I was in Turkey hunting the Bezor Ibex and that Ibex is, I think, credited kills in SCI. I think I'm the ninth person to ever take one of those with a bow and arrow. And it was the third largest in the world. And when I was there climbing these mountains, 36,000 feet, we did over nine days up and down steep cliffs. When you find, when you see a seashell on the side of a mountain, you realize that that was under water at a certain point in time. And to go down in these canyons and to see limestone, these beautiful places that you would never be there unless you were hunting. And that's what I really love about it. It takes me to places, I see more land, um, I have more challenges and just being at one with uh, myself and an animal is everything in the world to me. What ultimately led me, I guess, to Spy Point is that my time is extremely valuable and I have very limited amount of time because of how busy I am with my new company that I've started and working. My travel schedules is, is heavy. I do like to hunt, spend a lot of time in the woods. And so in doing that, I'm hunting everywhere from Alberta all the way to Alabama and everywhere in between. And the ability to do scouting and to do things when I'm not there is critical. 
and the cell cameras really is what brought me uh, here and ultimately led me to, to be in here to share some of the things that I'm passionate about with uh, the, the users and viewers um, and to also give a little bit back and when it comes to the food and the things that, that I've learned to do and some techniques and just trying to inspire other people to want to be in the outdoors, to want to go hunting, to want to go scout, to want to take the time, but more importantly, to, to do things that when you're at a hunting camp or you're at home with your friends and family and you have that cherished time together, how do you make it better? And to me, it's always better with better food. And so I think that people ultimately are extremely intimidated by cooking. And so I'm just gonna share through this series, very simple techniques, very basic recipes, because I simply like to eat clean. And that's just the way I grew up with my heritage and my background, kind of clean Mediterranean food. People ask me, hey, so, you know, what, how did you learn how to cook? And um, how do you know how to cook? Well, I look at other people that can pick up a guitar when they hear a song and have never played a guitar before, and they can just automatically play a guitar. Or somebody can pick up a paintbrush and just go to a, a canvas and start painting, and these beautiful things come out. I can't do that. Um, my artistic uh, abilities are design and then food. So as a child at eight years old, I, my mom was in the kitchen and I just was adamant about doing stuff and wanting to be hands-on. I had a lot of energy, uh, still do to this day. And and so anyway, she she did it. I remember one time I was, she was at a party and I called her at the party. She wanted to know what I wanted. I was bothering her and I said, well, I want to make a cake. And she said, uh, well, go, there's some cake in there. I go, no, I want to bake a cake. She goes, well, there's a, a box in the in the pantry. Just go get that out and follow the instructions. And you know, I want to make a real cake. And so she goes, you, you want to bake a real cake from scratch? I said, yeah, from the original. I didn't know the word scratch. And so anyway, she told me to go get the, the Joy of Cooking, um, which is a great book I still have, and to go get it out and to go to this page. It was marked and I went. And when she got home, I had a, a chocolate cake. So what got me into the food business was that my mom and dad went broke in 1994 and were forced at 55 and 51 years of age to go restart their life, which is pretty challenging, living in a one bedroom apartment. And so they decided to take my mother's talents and abilities uh, of being a great entertainer and a great chef to go out and open a small little lunch restaurant. Well, that was the beginning of Zoe's Kitchen, which is a national fast casual brand that ultimately ended up with over 280 restaurants. And, and so I ended up in uh, a couple years later going and taking that idea of that little small restaurant that they had that was Monday through Friday, 10 to four, um, five days a week, lunch only. And I took that idea and then I built a company, my first really large company that I built. And I started that in the end of 1999. And by 2000, uh, I think 18 or 19, there was over 280 restaurants. Um, I have an extreme sense of urgency with everything that I do. It's been probably the, the number one thing that's driven my success in my life is my sense of urgency. Um, I'm very passionate about family. I love food. Uh, I, I can't live without being outside. It just, I love that. I need, I need a lot of exercise in my life to take away some of the stress and, and things that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And so cycling is a huge part of my life. It's the last thing that I can do because my body's so beat up that I can't do anything else but ride a bicycle. So that's a huge part of what I do. I love to travel. I love to fly. The freedom to get in an airplane and to be where you want to be, when you want to be there, especially in the hunting world, is something that I'm extremely passionate about. It's also been extremely valuable. Uh, using an airplane to grow my company has been uh, a, a huge part of my success and ability to be nimble and quick. So I want my legacy to look like this, that he woke up every day with an insane amount of passion to do something every day and be the best that he could be at everything that he did. That to me is everything that he gave back to his friends, his family. Um, he was passionate about life and loved his little girl and the outdoors was where he wanted to be all the time and that his sense of urgency was insane. <laughs> My personal goal for the series and people watching the segments would be that they were courageous enough if they were not a chef and not a cook and were scared of cooking to go out and to try some of the recipes and to have some success and to find one dish out of all those dishes that they really liked that they could execute and that that kind of changed their life and they felt proud to invite friends and family over to share that meal with them and to find some satisfaction and then to take that and to 
go into the next level and continue to improve, um, that's the main thing that I hope to get accomplished.